I um, mm, 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 I go here up in the middle. That's good. That's a good spot here. Okay, welcome to the internet. So this is a very typical server setup that you have nowadays um, uh, online. So imagine your web browser and you go on a website. Oftentimes you connect to one server. So this load balancer or proxy is a server that you are connecting here. So you have to imagine that a request is coming here from, from this side. And this load balancer is then proxying those requests to an internal backend uh, service. So this is the actual web server, and this is just a, a proxy, just a thing to manage requests. So this thing is, for example, responsible maybe for rate limiting, or um, it will maybe there are many, there are a lot of different backend internal servers, like hundreds maybe of internal servers handling the actual application logic, and. Um, you have one big load balancer. And this load balancer doesn't do any real big computation. All it does is takes your request and forwards it to a backend service or one of the different servers and so forth. So this is a very typical setup. Even in a one server setup, it's often the case that you have a proxy in front of it and a backend um, after it. Especially when you have, um, when you use things like Amazon or like when you host your website on Amazon or with Google Cloud or whatever, then uh, you have the Google load balancer or the Amazon load balancer also automatically kind of in, maybe in front of it. You don't even maybe realize it. And then you have your uh, website behind it. Very typical setup. You, s you have a request coming in to the load balancer and the load balancer now sends it over to the backend. Servers, networks, um, Servers are connected over a network with sockets, for example. And a socket is just a stream of, of bytes, right? Um, it doesn't have a, a socket. You don't really need to know about how the networking with TCP or whatever really works underneath. And you don't really need to understand HTTP either. Um, all we can, what, what it, how sockets work is um, you, you write data in, and you can read that data again. It's just a stream of data. You just write zeros and ones in there. In on the load balancer is writing that on one socket, and the backend is then uh, reading the data coming in. Now, when you think of an a request coming in, this request has a start and an end, and you need to define what the start and end is. So in this paper example, let's say requests are separated by a line. Okay, each request is separated by a line. So now let's think about this. Uh, let's say we send a request here. We have here a line and we say we wanna request, um, uh, no, I don't have an example. Uh, the, the node number one, okay? We request the node number one. So the load balancer is writing, I want the node number one and to indicate the end of this request is drawing a line here. And now comes the backend. The backend now reads this data and it reads node one and sees the line and um, will now give you the content back. So it will respond here with content A, B, C, D. It returns to you the node. So it will write the date, the, the A, B, C, D here and indicates with the line, the end is done. So you as a user, you sent your request to the load balancer and you indicated, I want node one that was forwarded to the backend and the backend now returned with ABCD, indicating with a line, the request is done and returning that now to you. Now we read the response ABCD. And now we come to HTTP des desync attack, kind of like the, the principal idea of um, this um, attack class. And remember what the rule I told you was? Um, the rule I told you was that requests are separated by lines, okay? A line indicates the separation of requests. So let me create here a request coming in from the outside, okay? You sent an HTTP request and I draw you this request really quick here. And you tell me now what happens, okay? So 
I'm sending in now this request to the load balancer. Okay, I'm sending this to the load balancer. I, I fucked this up. So this is coming in. I'm sending, this is, uh, oh wait, I, I fucked it up. I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Okay, here's the line missing. Okay, so this is the request I sent coming in to the load balancer, okay? This, the load balancer understands lines. The load balancer understands that the line is the end of a request. But this load balancer is implemented in a shitty way because it only understands black lines. Okay? The load balancer sees this whole thing, this data, and sees a black line. This is my request. The, here's the black line. So, what does the load balancer do? It forwards now this packet onto the socket and sends the data over to the backend. Now, the backend is implemented differently. It also understands lines, but it also understands red lines. Now the backend uh, thinks, because it's just a socket, like it doesn't understand, it, it, it sees now, oh, there are two requests waiting. I'm seeing two lines. So the backend will now um, send a response back, node one again, A, B, C, D, and will return that data now to me, right? Like uh, the, the load balancer takes now this data and sends it back to my browser, okay? But now it also received the second request. Now it wants the admin information and the backend sees that second request because there's another line. So this is another request and it will send back um, a secret. Let's make this, uh, yeah, X, 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 that's the secret, okay? It will send back this, but I received already my response. I have received ABCD. So the load balancer has a response waiting here that was not yet handled. Now imagine <coughs> a normal user is coming in. A normal user maybe wants to read node two. A normal user sends now a request to the load balancer and says, I want node two. The load balancer sees the line, so it knows this is one request and puts it onto the socket. Please give me node two. The backend sees, oh yeah, there's a new node. It has a line. This is one request and it will um, create a response with C, 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 C. Okay, this is the node two. It will respond with this data. The load balancer now knows, okay, I need to read one response now from the receiving from the socket here and return that to the user. But we haven't returned this response yet. So what we will now return is this response is now returned to the user. And now we have a des uh, and this is the desync state, right? Um, there's a, there was a second response still pending on, the, on this socket here, the response from the backend that the load balancer hasn't given a user yet. And when the load balancer received another request, send it to the backend, um, it was reading a response, but it was reading this pending response still sitting on that socket. And that's basically how desync attack works. This misunderstanding of what it means that requests are separated by a line. Um, the load balancer was dumb and only understood black lines. So it forward this whole thing as one request, but the backend understood also red lines. So the backend thought, oh, the load balancer is sending me two requests, so I have to send two responses. But the load balancer thought it's only one request and only returned one response. And so the, when the next user came, it returned this other pending response. Does that make sense? Why the backend handles lines if the load balancer does it in the front already? Uh, that's just how it's implemented. Um, the, the, there's just socket connect. The load balancer is really dumb. And the load balancer takes HTTP requests and just forwards those, those HTTP requests. And so in when we now speak about the actual HTTP desync attack and we think about HTTP requests, the basic HTTP uh, desync attack works because you have different content uh, encoding, so you have the content length that tells you how large is the whole request. 
but you can also have uh, chunked encoding where you now send the data in chunks. And uh, so this is basically this difference where the load balancer might think I'm sending, um, uh, is, is looking maybe at the content length and so is sending the whole HTTP packet, but the backend sees the uh, the chunked encoding and interprets it as two chunks or something like this, you know? Is a line, so this is just abstract. These lines do not really exist. This is just abstract to explain um, that requests need to be separated somehow, or like these requests need to be separated. In this example, they are separated by a line. And uh, do you think happens because these two systems disagree what a line is? The load balancer only understands black lines while the back end understands red and black lines. Um, and this misunderstanding in parsing data um, causes this. This is, you, you can even abstract this further and um, we, call, we can call this a parser differential. There's a parser for requests here and a parser for requests here and they have a slightly different behavior and that is many times exploitable. A lot of security issues happen because you have parts that try to understand the same data but do it slightly differently. And this misunderstanding between those two parts can lead to security issues. And um, that's why generally when we say things like we don't want complex protocols and we need very good um, references, um, um, it's, it's for security reasons because these, these programmers that implement these things, maybe one of them did it wrong. Maybe when I said we need to separate requests at lines, maybe it meant I meant every line, the, it, the color doesn't matter but maybe also just meant uh, black lines. So it needs to be defined. And when uh, um, these, these standards of how a protocol is, has to be implemented are not very, very strict and leave room for interpretation, you might end up with two different implementations that can be played against each other. Does that make sense? This can also be done with responses, not only requests. Yeah, of course, at, at the fundament, it is two systems understand data differently. Yeah, so this was uh, my abstract uh, um, explanation of how a desync attack works.